There is a Native American saying that Antoine de Saint-Exupéry, a famous French poet and pilot, quoted. It says in a nutshell, we don't inherit earth from our parents, we borrow earth from our children. Today, this is the only thing human being as a species should care about, consider global warming and the impact of our technologies on our environment. We have a responsibility to make sure our children will see our earth preserved and enhanced. As the earth today is being duplicated digitally, this responsibility is even more true. What will happen when the physical and virtual worlds interact, mix, cooperate, exchange information and increasingly build upon one another? What will happen to our world as the energy-dependent wireless infrastructures that support this digital era grows its carbon footprint on Earth? What will happen when all humans are duplicated virtually, augmenting the 7 billion humans on our planet? The more we interact with our digital twins in the virtual world, the more we are redefining our posture as human beings. We thrive in finding meaning for our journey on Earth, a journey full of discoveries, connections and unions, a journey that allows us to share our views and hear new perspectives and reciprocate love for one another. And our interaction, both in the real world and the digital world, is with human beings, be mainly because this relates to us as humans. There is more to learn from our interaction with others than to just stay in our corner and watch. These interactions across the real and digital worlds include and are mixed with objects, landscapes, humans. No longer can we see the difference nowadays. Films show it. We have reached the frontier of the uncanny valley. With the use of deep learning and computer graphic techniques, we have reached a momentum where our human perception struggles to differentiate the digital world from the real world. With deep fakes plunging us into an environment where digital synthetic human faces reach a level of realism, we don't know what to think anymore. Am I seeing something real? Did that actually happen? It is even more true today that the barrier between real and virtual melts away. Their merging is happening. What if the digital self that we use every day on social networks could help us see our real selves differently? What if we had a digital human? that helped us dig inside ourselves to seek more human values and gave us the ability to self-reflect. What if our digital human became our real twin? What if we could give him or her or them a name? Perhaps our own or a different one. Should we duplicate this digital human to augment Earth's population? Could he, she, them be a replica of ourselves? Titiana, also known as Elisabeth Sauvy, was one of the first journalists in the 1920s to meet with Torajas, the indigenous population of Borneo. She reported that the Torajas people believed in ritual, worshipped gods, and didn't name their children before the age of three. The reasoning was that the gods would eventually forget them and death would not take them away. So what should we do? Do we name our digital humans after ourselves or should we wait until God accepts them? I remember a time 15 years ago 
when after school my kids were discussing an online multiplayer game. They were excited about the play and also telling each other about their friends, both inside and outside of the game. They were going in and out of the game with the help of their avatar and proceeded to mix their virtual and real discussions. For them, there was no longer a border. It was fluid. This is an interesting question, isn't it? We borrow the world from our children and our children will be equipped with technologies like the digital human. And they will be able to talk to us and ask, why didn't you do anything? Our digital human could serve us as our proxies. He, she, they could save us on travel because we could send them, him or her, to remote locations. My digital human could be talking with you today at the Infinity Festival, interact with people on my behalf, answer questions, explain key points and more. I could drive the decisions of my digital human myself, or she, he, they could be autonomous. As long as my digital human is me, do I care about this choice? Do I need to control my digital human? I see this point raising questions. Here, some say this technology would unleash a new humankind, and if digital humans were autonomous, they would supplant us. I think our common intelligence could deal with that potential, and I hope humankind is reasonable, sharing and caring. You know, we represent ourselves as we wish. We even customize our appearance to uphold our freedom of how people see us. At times, we want to be true to others and show who we are. Sometimes we hide and show only some parts. Virtual technologies today enable us to duplicate our appearance. Our success with technology enable us to mimic reality. The technology is already here. We can capture assets using photogrammetry and even videogrammetry. We can record people's behavior and ways of acting. Using deep learning data sets, we could prepare for the next step in enabling autonomous digital humans. Video game already do this. In less than an hour, we can today reproduce a digital replica of a human head featuring its texture, hair, eyebrows, light and shadows on the skin, and the subtlety of blend shapes to represent how his expression will later convey the digital human's personality. We have created a full pipeline that enables this idea of a static yet 3D image of ourselves. Using computer graphics, we can make artistic tweaks to the image or stop the reconstruction and to enhance the result. The final version of our digital human is ready for action. Using vision techniques, we can now give the digital human some life sparkles. Capabilities like motion capture, facial performance, on-the-fly reconstructions of a person's expression are all doable today. But why do I need a digital me? Why do I need myself in the digital world to represent me? For sure, my digital twin would do a lot of things for me. Answer my calls when I'm away, interact on social networks to gather information and respond to questions, maybe address work for me while I'm working in my garden free some time for physical interactions and gatherings. The list is long. These capabilities mean my digital human is exactly me. And creators, actors, producers would certainly use that technology. Many actors have already created their own digital double that could be used for movies and opportunities in the future. What if Steve McQueen, one of my favorite actors, 
could still be alive digitally? What if I could keep him in my digital pocket and interact with him when I'm wished? I could stop a movie and ask him a question, wear my goggles to act alongside him in a scene or even choose him as my partner to play inside a video game. How awesome would that be? We could have our digital humans interact with each other despite the fact that McQueen passed away long ago. In the end, what is it that concept exactly me? In the future, would we be able to really capture someone's inner self, their mind or thoughts? Maybe even at one point we might transfer some of our person's souls to their avatar. What if, with the help of AI, we could enable the capture of someone's personality and apply it to their digital human? You may say that all of that is scary, but it may also enable Steve and I to share moments together. If I get my appearance scanned and my motion is acquired, where is all that data stored? And more so, it asks the question, who controls the digital human? Today, internet stores whole human data and plays with it. Should we let companies or states access our own digital avatar? What if we could offer anyone their personal digital human and let them control it? This raises important questions about the legal rights of our digital human. Einstein once said, imagination is more important than knowledge, for knowledge is limited, whereas imagination embraces the entire world, stimulating progress, giving birth to evolution. You've listened to what I had to say, possibly thinking this man is a fool with too much imagination, that none of this will happen. To me, if digital replicas could embed some of our human constitution, our reflection on evolution could change. Our perception of ourselves could shift. I certainly believe my imagination could liberate my senses and my digital human could help me free time to seek the true meaning of my life. In the end, I'm also happy to be in the real world, like Peter Falk sharing a cup of coffee in Wim Wenders' Der Himmel über Berlin with the soon fallen angel. I'm sharing that moment with my angel the one that looks above my shoulder. Thank you.